So Labor Day weekend is behind us, and the whole thing started with a wonderful presentation of Outstanding Citizen. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was inspiring, uh, the winners this year. And for the second time in the long history of the Outstanding Citizen Award, uh, the Outstanding Citizen was really two people, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Hartman and uh, Laura Rosenthal. Uh, and they have done so much for the community. Uh, they listed the many uh, uh, organizations they're part of, lots of things involving climate, mm -hmm. uh, sustainability, zero waste circle. Um, Time bank. Yeah. Fighting global warming. Yeah, yeah peace, yeah. peace initiatives, the New Deal Cafe. It wasn't mm -hmm. all global issues. It was, you know, organizations here at home as well. Uh, mm -hmm. They put so much into the community. And what's great is the community said, thank you. We appreciate it. In and a big way. And I was really touched that, that uh, Jay Davis said that uh, we know that you love Greenbelt, and now Greenbelt loves, shows how it loves you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, and also, a uh, point of the whole thing is that, and I think Michael and Laura would be the first to, uh, to agree, it's not mm -hmm. just about them, mm -hmm. but it's uh, how all of us uh, uh, have the opportunity to make our community, make our, our region, make our world a better place. It just requires doing something, diving in, volunteering, you know? So I was there that night and we have a little bit of tape to show. Let's Great. take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a team dedicated to this community's success in environmental care and social equity for all citizens. Our outstanding citizen for 2019, Lori Rosenthal and Michael Hartman. We've known for a long time that you love Greenbelt. And today, you can see that Greenbelt loves you too. They have done so much that there are times where I wonder, do they sleep? I don't know if they do. Really, anything's possible in this town. You, you dream it and it can happen. So how does it feel? <laughs> It's a little uh, overwhelming. It's a lot overwhelming, yes. Yes, it is. Um, we, uh, we found community here, and uh, we try to make a difference in people's lives. So Michael and Laura were both so overwhelmed, it was really just great to see the reaction. It was, mm -hmm. and uh, that reaction continued at the parade. Mm -hmm. So uh, they were at the head of the parade and all decked out. Uh, Michael was wearing a tux. So they, they looked great. They were smiling and waving. And Laura had her big parasol. It was, they were it was pretty neat. Um, and they kicked off uh, the parade. They were at the start of it that was filled with a tremendously diverse uh, uh, group of people, groups of, you know, groups of groups, organizations, mm -hmm. uh, everything from politicians and uh, members of unions uh, to uh, nursery school students. That's right. I saw uh, we, we had Greenbelt City stars. We had the, uh, the Civil Air Patrol. Uh, uh, cheerleaders from pets. Roosevelt, Roosevelt yes, cheerleaders. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, animal uh, shelter. Dog training. Dog training, yeah. They were really kind of funny to watch. I look forward to them every year. It was a little military yeah, in a way, it but it was good. Um, I my doggy, yeah. But yeah, what was great about the parade is that it celebrated us, mm -hmm. celebrated uh, Greenbelt, celebrated uh, Americans. Um, yeah, it is a great bit of Americana, and I think uh, it was great to see that we got such two TV stations came by to cover it, and they know that they can count on us to carry on this tradition. Channel 4 and Channel 7 were both here. Uh, we were covering it as well. Exactly. Uh, and you'll read about it in the paper. Right. Um, and Gate was there too, so you get to watch a distillation of this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So here's a bit of Americana covered by grassroots uh, news organizations. So we have things going on uh, with the county, both the county fire department and the Greenbelt Fire Department. Yeah, there was a recent work session uh, mm -hmm. between the uh, council and uh, the fire department. It was mostly the Greenbelt Volunteer Fire Department, but they're part of the larger Prince George's County. Mm -hmm. So at the county level, there was a changing of the guard. The, the uh, person in charge. Um, That's right, Chief Barksdale, Benjamin Barksdale. Barksdale. Right. That's mm -hmm. right, uh, is retiring. And for the first time, uh, the new chief is, will, is a woman, will be a woman. And that, her name? And, uh, Tiffany Green, right. and she's also a county native. 
Yes, mm -hmm. she is. So uh, I think it's great for a, a local person to mm -hmm. to take that role. Um, it's a big. It's the, I think the twenty twentieth busiest or the some thirty fifth fortieth busiest. In the uh, country, county right? in the country uh -huh. in terms of fire calls. And uh, the, the coordination in the county turns out that Greenbelt, 35% I guess of Greenbelt's response, uh, responses are in Greenbelt and the other 65% are outside of Greenbelt. And the council asked about that. They were mm -hmm. not concerned necessarily, but they wanted more information you know, about our resources being used mm -hmm. elsewhere. And I think the, the picture I kind of got was that Greenbelt, like all fire departments in the county, have a role to play. You know, they're all pieces in the puzzle. And just because only 35% mm -hmm. of the calls are here doesn't mean, you know, it, we, we need this this piece here. We do, because I see Berwyn Heights respond here to Greenbelt and Absolutely. from all over the place. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I was kind of interested in and a little surprised to read about was um, they, they covered the physical and mental wellness of first responders, saying that suicides have now outpaced deaths on the job. Yeah, I read that too, and that was mm -hmm. pretty concerning to me. At least they're aware of it, they're focused on it, and I think they're instituting, they, they outline some of the things they're instituting or going to institute right, to right. try to help with that, to try so, on the job, you know, stress, mental yeah, health. Peer support, chaplaincy. Uh, so yeah, it's a tough life for them. It is, it is. But I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bottom line, or the end of the story, is uh, a word from our local, uh, mm -hmm. the Greenbelt Volunteer mm -hmm. Fire Department. A lot of the fire departments in Prince George's County are professionals, uh -huh. uh, but we are a volunteer fire department. Uh, they do a fantastic job, but they made a point of saying that they have a hard time getting people to volunteer who are able to, to do this uh -huh. role. And so, Anybody able and willing and wanting to look into it should uh, talk to the volunteer fire department and see what they can Yeah, we need to pursue that more, get some reminders out there. You know, there's one final thing on there, and that was, uh, I guess the county mentioned reimbursement for, I guess, uh, ambulance runs That's and right. how they do not aggressively go after people. Yes, and what interested me especially about that is after, say, five or six times that a person has requested mm -hmm. uh, EMT services, they, they, then that person, that name, goes into a program to link them up oh. with home health. Uh -huh. So I found that to be both a way of trying to reduce costs of EMT, right, reduce that, right. because that's 80% mm -hmm. of what they do are the EMT calls. Um, mm -hmm to reduce that cost and yet to try to maybe meet a need in a more effective way. Mm -hmm. I, I was impressed with that. Well, thank you for catching us up on things happening in Greenbelt this week. Thanks, Andy. Mm -hmm.